Hello, it's Andrew Eborn here with another exciting and thrilling episode of KTT Legacy with the wonderful RJ Gibb all the way down in Tame. How's it going, RJ? Fantastic. Here in the compound. I, I love the compound. <laughs> and we've got all these wonderful autumnal colours. Here I am. I've got the garden inside here in uh, Regent's Park. I've got my pumpkins have been growing merrily. Me and my pumpkin, it's always a thrill. <laughs> and you have got the glorious autumnal colours over there as well. And talk about inspiring. You were on the Isle of Wight a few days ago. Uh, you've come back. Um, how's that yes. been? How's the transition? Well, you know, the, the Isle of Wight is the Isle of Wight. It's, uh, it's almost uh, it's like a semi-tropical little paradise. Um, here is, you know, the, the, it's, it's Oxfordshire. So you take it's it's a, a wonderful um the, the people are wonderful they're they're so um welcoming and uh, they're so uh, you know uh, willing to help a neighbor there's, there's a very low crime and, and so forth i think the, that's an, that's an amazing part of it and also one thing you have to accept is that it's a wet county so it's but this is why the crops grow so well here it's one of the best places to grow um, grow fruits and barley and so forth, which you know is kind of like the Isle of Wight. The Isle of Wight, anything you throw in the ground there, it's uh, you know, it's like vegetables on steroids <laughs> without, the, without the steroids. Without the steroids, <laughs> without the steroids, it's always good. And they, they do, they have fantastic tomatoes and all sorts of glorious things. Oh, gosh, one the, yeah. One of the things we're doing at KTT Legacy is we're starting to use some of the local ingredients um, from the estate as well. So all yes. of that is in the pipeline. Tell us a little bit about what we might expect in the future. Well, we, we have our own gin that's coming out. We're, we're working with a distillery in Bristol and one in Northern Ireland. Um, and we, are, we will be doing exactly, oh yes, and, and also one in Poland um, for a, uh, an elderflower infused uh, vodka. And, but what we'll be doing is infusing botanicals that are from the Prebendal estate um, into, the, into the batches. So, you know, we'll have um, some amazing Things like, as I said, elder, elderflower, elderberry, um, strawberries, raspberries, there's a conference pear, um, there's uh, blackberries, currants, uh, blueberries, gooseberries. Yeah, and, um, and also one is the linden. There's so many linden trees here, and it's one of those things that's um, one of those really nice and sweet and delicate tastes that's not uh, appreciated as much as it should be. And um, yeah, so we'll have the Linden vodka, Linden gin. So, and, and what I mean, you mentioned about collaboration. We're, we're Very medicinal as well. Companies and distilleries already. And that the great thing is we're yeah. totally open for collaboration. So if people have got suggestions about product ranges or they'd like to work with us uh, with their own products and uh, we can adapt them appropriately, uh, then do get in touch with us here at KTP yeah. Legacy. Uh, we love to hear from everybody and make sure you've all signed up uh, to ktclegacy.com because that's coming along very, very nicely. And talk to us a bit about the, the history of the Prebendal and how your family first came upon it. Well, it's um, it's an old um, it's an old monastery. Uh, it was built by Robert Grosset, who was one of the first. Um, he was he was a bishop, but he was also one of the first physicists who. Um, he he brought in a lot of the works from Aristotle and and others, and he he actually um, built most of the colleges in in Oxford, the original ones. And he, uh, he actually um, wrote a treatise on light, the first treatise on light, which talked about not only the, the origin of light and wh what he thought it came from, but also um, the, the way that the, the universe was created or the, the, the way that the spheres, celestial spheres were, were created. So even though he wasn't correct, his mathematical uh, insight and um, his treatise on infinities, how different infinities are bigger than others. It was just really profound. And he, he built this place and on, inside it, there's a, a font that's, uh, it ha uses capillary action. So every time the, um, the water table comes up, if you can see the water table is up now, 
the capillary action comes up from underneath, which is little uh, baptismal fronds to be made. Um, on top of that, the uh, sentencing of Joan of Arc was said to have been made here at the Grand Hall, which burnt down in the 1500s and no longer exists, but it's um, the site of it is there and you can still see the burn marks from the carbon, you know, when it burnt down. Apparently all the bishops gone. Together there, convened to pass sentence on uh, Jean d'Arc, who was then uh, executed in, in, uh, in France. So uh, that, as well as the English Civil War, this was, this was it changed hands a few times uh, between royalists and roundheads. And, um, there was a famous attack. Spot, can't you, on, on, on some of the walls? Yes. You've been picking some out, I, I think, ever since you were a little boy. Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, across the street, at the, you can hear the St. Mary's right now ringing. And uh, that, that uh, is where, um, on the wall outside, you can see these little, um, the wall, the top of it, it actually has these little sort of dips. And it's where the roundhead um, uh, musketeers were, uh, they, they, every time when they would make their, um, their lead balls, uh, musket balls, they would then have to round them. And they would, they would round them almost like sandpaper on the, on the stone. And it, of course, there were so many, you know, hundreds of men doing this that it's now got these little dips. And when they came over here and fired those bullets, those, uh, those balls, you can see in, in some of the old doors, as you say, they're lodged in there. And I, I used to, as a kid, I used to pick out some of them and I still, you know, some of them are still there. Um, it's just incredible. That and sword slashes at, at near the, the entrance. You can see where they were uh, trying to push their way in, uh, rammed, ramming down the doors and so forth. It is quite extraordinary, the history. And talk to me about the history, about how, how your family found the place. Um, yeah, no, it was... Um, so, sorry, well, well, one sec. Okay, sorry. <laughs> so there's uh, serendipitous moments where the... Uh, this is the package being delivered. Oh, good. Well, there we go. You got, you got the present for Halloween. It's all trick or treating. <laughs> it sounds, sounds wonderful. So, tell you, yeah, we were just talking about when your family first discovered the place. Tell me about how you acquired it. Uh, when I was around two years old, they were looking for um, a nice old uh, how They wanted an old house that had a lot of history to it and, uh, and yet still had, you know, some. Uh, some nice grounds and and uh, no, they just fell in love with it. So that was uh, that was eighty five, nineteen eighty five. And before that, there were it was owned by part of the Rolls Royce family, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Um, it was uh, one of the the old heirs from the Rolls family. He he owned. Uh, he, he actually built the um, there's a a wooden balcony that he built outside, especially for a uh, Romeo and Juliet performance of Romeo and Juliet um, that he uh, had staged for all his, uh, his staff, um, which they in turn gave him a, a ginkgo tree, which is planted out back. And that was in 1964, but uh, it's still there. You know, you've been on it, you know, the, the big wooden yeah, balcony. And of course, when I was at Radha, that was also something that uh, some of the workshops I held and, and classic stage Island, we held some of the workshops there and it came and came in handy. <laughs> oh, fantastic. No, no, the building's been an absolute delight. In fact, uh, as you'll well recall, I've been locked in a few times myself and <laughs> which has always been. Pretty <laughs> yeah. Here's the, here's the wall. You see, this is what he had to scale. <laughs> <laughs> It was quite extraordinary. Yes, I had to go tell the story, RJ. Tell tell everybody what happened. Yeah. Well, you you had stayed uh, over in the refectory, which is where all the monks um, used to used to stay. I had and, a habit um, of staying there, absolutely together. Yeah. With yes. I think the <laughs> I think the <laughs> I think the um, yeah, it, it it was just uh, yes. What was it? Yes, you 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 woke up early in the morning and you had to get back to London and everyone else was just so tired. We'd been up, you know, quite late the night before. 
and you couldn't you couldn't get hold of anyone so no one could, could give you the the um, code for the gates um, so uh, next thing I know you you call you call me afterwards saying you had to scale the walls <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, the great thing is, I was in my suit. I was suited and booted, <laughs> ready to go after my meeting. And I, and it was, you can turn it around again. You can see that wall. It, it's not like a low wall. It's a pretty high wall. <laughs> I, I had to scale that wall in my suit, and I'm sure there's <laughs> oh, At just, least the vines came in handy. Absolutely, absolutely. But the other thing you, you mentioned that the Rolls family um, they used to live there, and uh, they had a few famous pop stars who had their eye on the place. Tell me about some of those who were not so successful in persuading the previous owner to sell it to them. Ah, gosh, um, I think I'm, I'm not sure. I think uh, that because, of course, um, Michael, Michael Eaton. And my father, you know, was were looking around for places. I think uh, it might have been one of the ones that Eric Clapton had um, considered, but I think uh, couldn't come to the right terms with the with the owner. Um, and there was also um, later on, um, we kept having this this helicopter fly low over the house. We didn't know, you know, it was, it was a very lavish helicopter. You know, it was a, a nice. One of the really nice uh, Sikorskis. It was coming down low, too low, <laughs> and um, we came. Come, we came to find out that that was Orlando Bloom. Ah. Um, he fell in love with it from the air, apparently, and uh, wanted to to buy it from us. But uh, we weren't selling it at the time. Obviously, we're not selling it now. <laughs> um, so Orlando, who's a regular watcher of this program, that we've just broken the sad, he's going to be so devastated. <laughs> you know. Sorry about that, Orlando. It ain't for sale, but it's always good. <laughs> it is glorious, and we love it on that sort of basis. Uh, but as you say, it's been part of the estate is also going to be part of uh, uh, what we're looking at with KTT, because a lot of what we're doing is looking, getting the whole essence, because obviously a lot of things were composed there. Uh, you worked with your father extensively there. So capturing the spirit in some of the products and the services <laughs> and the creation in terms of what we're doing. Uh, Prebendal is really at the heart of it, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, I think it, it, it became, you know, uh, it grew on my, my father and he felt like he was responsible for a lot of the, the things that were happening in time, like the, uh, I think they, they were trying to build huge, uh, you know, the, this gas station on top of a, uh, You know, the same. Oh, it sounds like you're bouncing. We're losing a little bit of reception there. I don't know if we still have you. Uh, oh, yeah. Are you back? Hello? Oh, yeah. There we go. You sounded as though yeah. you were garlic then, or you'd sound, you'd swallowed something bouncing. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you had a face off inside you. But you say, yeah. You're um, I don't know where in tame as well so is a, a key element well, which is wonderful look rj it's been a real pleasure as always catching up thank you for sharing some of the history um but for now rj gibb thank you for joining us absolutely Bye -bye. god bless <laughs>